And then one other thing we could do is have the timbre change through time. So we'll move on to the next exercise. Just make sure I've actually covered everything that I said I was going to cover. There you go. So ensure a consistent relationship between carrier and modulating frequencies. And then permit an evolving timbre by using line or line tilde um, and function objects. So in fact, I think that's what we'll do. The line tilde and function objects we will use together. And in fact, um, I'm going to cheat and show you the solution. Uh, this is what we've just made, except that once again, I've, I've so that we could change the uh, the timbre um, by changing the right hand side of the object, which of course wouldn't update the value coming from M2F until I sent something new from M2F. I'm actually sending that value again uh, by by using a bang to output the entire contents of that multiplication object when I change the uh, the float box up here. So I can change, as you heard earlier, I can change the um, the timbre like that. But as I say, the next thing we might want to do is uh, to uh, have the timbre change through time. And what I'll do is I'll make it and then I'll explain what I've done. So I need a bit more space. Um, and I will uh, add a function object along with a line tilde object. These are all things you're very familiar with by now, or should be. Um, and uh, I will send that into, well, because it's a line tilde object, it needs to go into a multiplication tilde object. Otherwise, um, we're not going to get anything at all. So I'm going to replace this this multiplication object with a line t uh, with a multiplication tilde object, and that means that I can't go through this anymore. So I will replace this with that multiplication object, which now goes directly into cycle, but it's essentially doing the same thing. And I will connect that M2F to the multiplication object there. And then the line and the function objects go here. And once again, I'm going to have to move everything because there's not enough room. And use a bang or a button object to trigger the envelope. And I will. Choose a uh, low and high display range. I'll make that a little bit larger. So I'll make that value of 0 to 5. So now I can write in uh, I don't know, a squiggle. And what happens is that when the uh, keyboard is played, that is the uh, envelope is triggered. Um, so line reads, uh, sends through um, a kind of uh, changing numbers um, into the multiplication object. That changes the ratio um, consistent or uh, through time of the uh, frequency that is being sent out as the um, M2F object. Um, so that basically the pitch that was sent from the keyboard. Uh, and so we'll get a, a changing, as I say, we'll get a changing timbre. But it will be a consistently cha you know, changing timbre. It will be consistent over the various notes that we play. Okay. Not terribly beautiful, but we're doing what we wanted to do. And to confuse you too much, um, but we've, we've got a way of enveloping... Um, our uh, our modulation, um, but also if if you look at a um, a synthesizer, sort of commercial synthesizer, it will give envelope functions, but it will also give modulation functions. Um, so in fact, we could modulate our modulator, 
um, simply by adding another low frequency um, uh, cycle object. Um, so uh, we could get rid of this and simply add another cycle object which will actually I could just copy this engine over this one will modulate the modulator over uh, a value from 0 to 1 so again if I send frequency there um so you, you you know you can you can kind of layer um different oscillators in fact what we could also do is to um, have a a different um, oscillator uh, control the modulation. So we could use a sawtooth, for example. To do that. Which is kind of interesting. And of course, you know, then we you get more complex modulation by increasing that into the frequency domain again. You might want to explore. I quite like that actually. Um, you might want to explore using different um, oscillators. Actually, we'll try it just before I shut up. We'll try a Rex rectangle wave uh, with a argument of 0 0.5, which gives us uh, something between two values there. So anyway, mess about. You can get some quite interesting stuff by layering um, cycles and getting you know, various different oscillators to modulate other oscillators and so on.